Bro, so here's what I have to tell you. But I remember coming home that night and I was just kind of mad because I couldn't, I was just like, I wasn't even mad. I was just like, dang it, I didn't even get a chance to like talk to him at all, more, more than two words. But I remember walking in the door and my mom just kind of like, so how did it go? I said, oh, I'm going to marry him. I'd never said that about anyone else in my life. I didn't know where it came from. I just opened my mouth and boom, it came out. And she's like, okay, that's good. Never talked to this man before in my life. She's like, all right. Who gets to say it's too soon To be falling for you Cause I've heard of things like this before But didn't know the dream still came true My birthday was June 28th The God and Country was June 29th And the vans were all leaving at midnight on the 28th and my whole birthday I felt so convicted like you need to go to God and country you need to go and I'm like no God I don't want to go I don't want to go I'm not going and it's funny because the whole day my dad kept telling me he's like you know I don't I don't think my dad was thinking it either but he was always telling me like God's will for your life will always be played out like in the parameters of church and being involved and everything like that so I was like I think that kept registering through my head and I'm like all right all right, fine, I'll go. Just finally gave in. Because some people very stealthily pointed out that, oh, he's going in the van, you should go in the van. And then we ended up in two different cars. It's terrible, <laughs> but, it was, but it's okay. And yeah, we never met each other at all during that entire day. And yeah, yeah. And then I just started taking pictures, doing what I had to do, and I remember. We just changed into our uniforms, and then she came around with her camera taking pictures and I was thinking, who is this woman? Why is she taking my picture? <laughs> she, she took a hundred photos probably yeah. that day. I turned the corner and I think I like, okay, I kind of, he's kind of cute. I don't know what it was, but I turned the corner and all I saw was this man in blue standing there. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of clicked for me. And I was like, all right, and we'll say it was the blues. No, <laughs> I remember I got in country I think that made me even more nervous to talk to him because I thought he was mad at me. Because we were packing up for God and Country and we, I was sitting on one of the walls with a bunch of the girls because we already finished cleaning our part. And he was pulling the rest of the sound equipment and he didn't see me and he just kept backing up. So I kept trying to like yell and I was like, Anton, like, you're gonna back into the wall, like Anton. So finally, I just yelled at him, but I wasn't trying to, like being mean, I was just trying to like, hey, if you keep going, you're gonna back into me in the wall. And instead of calling him Anton, I called him Wonton, because that's the only way I could remember his name. So I felt really bad. So after I did that, I was like, oh no, there went my one chance. <laughs> so I felt terrible. The very next morning, I uh, got water baptized, and lo and behold, she was the same person there taking my photo <laughs> as I was reading out my testimony uh, to, for everyone to hear. And I, as I was reading, I saw her and I thought, ah, oh, it's you again, <laughs> the very next day. And she, and she hunted me down later to hand me photos, uh, paper printed photos. She was nervous, so she whispered, uh, hear the photos, and, and I don't know why. <laughs> I whispered back. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed, but she didn't notice because she was nervous, so <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> All I know is that I was trying to give these photos to him and I kept trying to ask different people to give them the photos to him because I couldn't do it. I couldn't get up nerve. And they're like, just go talk to him. I'm like, I, I can't. So I asked someone and they were like, okay, yeah, I'll give it to him. And then they turned around, they're like, I'm kidding. No, you do it. And I was like, oh, dang it. Yeah, Miss Elaine had all his baptism pictures. And then she mentioned something was like, well, you know, Natalie, I've been praying for a husband for you or whatever. I was like, oh, thanks. So I was just kind of over it. And she's like, well, so I was joking with her, I was like, do you have anyone in mind? She said, well, there is one single person who just got baptized yesterday. So here's some pictures, go give it to him. And like slid them over. I was like, oh, great. Okay, now I gotta go talk to this man. I don't want to. Just could not, I was dreading going to church because I was so nervous. I was like, no, I can't. I was just walking around with these, had multiple opportunities to go give it to him and I just couldn't. I was just walking around with all the pictures and the thing and I was like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. I think they were doing announcements or whatever. And I was like, okay, if I do it now, he won't talk to me, it'll work. I just, I'm like, here. <laughs> so that's what I did. 
And I was like, okay, here I go. It took me a week to build up courage to talk to him. And then I came up and I said, uh, Pastor, what do you think about Natalie Marty? And he, he uh, looked away and he was smiling. It's funny because I saw him talking to Pastor that day and Pastor looked right at me and it was a really serious conversation. And I was like, oh no, he's offended. He went to Pastor over this. And like he always does. <laughs> and he said, she's a good girl. You'd make a, you two would make a good fit something like that, or a good couple. And he said, you should go talk to your dad, just like that, two sentences later. And then he walked away smiling. That was it, <laughs> short and sweet. I was expecting a no. He pushed me through it. <laughs> and then I saw him talking to my dad and I was like, oh no, now I'm really in trouble. Also expecting a no, he told me, he shook my hand, he said it would be an honor for me to get to know his daughter. And he also told me that there are guys in church he would say no to, and I was so surprised to hear that. But I got a very surprising yes, and he was, he was happy to, to tell me that. And then he directed me straight to her, and then I got nervous all over again. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, so that, that same day, like 10, 20 minutes later, I eventually talked to Natalie, but uh, she happened to get a haircut and wore a different dress, so I had to had to uh, just build up courage for like 10 minutes just before I came up to her. And uh, she didn't notice, but I was nervous. But I asked her. Because I was talking to Mary by the bathroom and he came up with his vacuum. And he's like, hey, can I talk to her? So Mary like turned me around and pushed me at him. And I remember just looking up at this guy and he's looking down at me and he was completely serious. There was no like smile, he's like, I need to talk to you. I was like, <laughs> oh no. And I was thinking, oh, this is it. This is it. I'm going to die. And then he's like, you free this sometime this week? And I, I wasn't, again, I wasn't thinking any date, no get to know you, no nothing. And he's, and I was like, free for what? And he just kind of to get coffee and talk and try to get to know each other if you'd like to. And I think that's what completely just it took me off guard because he never looked at me. I thought he was mad at me. So he never looked at me, never gave me anything like, oh, I kind of like this girl. I think she's cute, nothing. So it just like, oh, okay, sure. And then it just kind of went from there. I think my goal was to get a second date and not get rejected. And I, I was nervous and I, I bring my faithful Uno cards because I can play and uh, maybe make it less awkward, I guess. So I, I got there, it was very dirty, lots of dead flies. I wasn't happy. <laughs> but then Natalie shows up and then we started talking and it, I thought it felt natural. And then time flew by. <laughs> you forgot, forgot. the <laughs> I'm all take two. I don't know why or whose idea it was, but we, we started taking care of all the difficult questions. And thankfully we figured quite a bit out on the first day. Uh, we went over debt, marriage, kids, uh, callings, work, quite a bit. Wow. All at once, and we, we figured it out. I wasn't there to have a girlfriend. I was looking for a wife, so maybe the questions came naturally, and thankfully she answered them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I knew I was gonna run late, and I did. I was really <laughs> late, actually. <laughs> I felt so bad. Well, because I was, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna act like this is a normal every, just a normal every day. And he called me in the gym, like before the date, and we went over a few things, like oh, okay, like I break the ice or whatever before we actually go meet up in person. Like, oh hey, how you doing? But I think what made it more nerve wracking was, yeah, we had the phone call, it was great. I mean, the conversation was flowing, but I think on Monday, yeah, Monday, after we were still talking, kind of texting back and forth. And he kind of left me on the, okay, well, I'll talk to you on Thursday. And he made it seem like it was so final. Like, okay, we're not talking in church. We're not doing anything. I'll see you on Thursday. But I didn't know where we were going, what time. I knew nothing. So I was like, okay. And then also like what we did talk about like on Sunday and Monday was what are we looking for? And I think both, 
I know for me, I don't know about you, for you, but I was so nervous because I was like, oh, dear God, please let him be looking for what I'm looking for because I don't want to go into this thing and just get another friend. So walked in the day, we kind of like went through the first couple minutes after I fell out of my chair. Um, yeah. Well, I'm kind of short and he picked like the tallest chairs in there. So I went up and yeah, it didn't work. But um, I think we were just looking at each other like, what do we talk about? But we both had like the same thing that we're thinking kind of. And so I just, I remember just looking and I was like, okay, so we need to get this on the table. What are we looking for? And we were both on the same page and I was like, okay, now I can breathe. I'm like, all right, yes, yeah. all right. A couple more coffee dates and then I think we went on our second date um, after outreach, went to Port City Java finally. Mm -hmm. And we had fun, we played more Uno. And then he asked me, he's like, so am I allowed to see you more than once a week or is this like a once a week thing or what do, what do I, what can I do? And I was like, um, I don't know how much, how often you want to see me, that's up to you. And it just kind of went from there. And then I said, oh, you know, instead of us always going out, like, would you like to come over to the house? That way we can just, you know, talk, you can stay as long as you want to, I don't like, whatever. And then he was at my house every day pretty much since. So I was like, okay, <laughs> just kind of like, all right. I guess he's like, I'm coming over on my own. Okay, okay. I, I ate a lot of dinner. I ate a lot of dinner, oh yeah. <laughs> after our first date, uh, a short time afterwards, we, we both began to realize just how many people were, uh, I guess, involved in the beginning of our relationship. But we found out so many couples in church were praying for us, like over 10, maybe 15 or more, mm -hmm. that we never knew. So the timing was perfect. It couldn't have been better. I think it was a, just the supernatural timing. 